Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to hack your revision using neuroscience. So first of all I'm going to help you understand what you need to revise and in what order, when you should revise it for maximum impact and how to revise. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for lots more revision videos on neuroscience as well as English literature and language. What is learning? Simply put, learning is moving something from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. It's building neural pathways. So the question is, how can we revise in a way that maximizes the neural pathways we're making in the minimum amount of time? So your short-term memory can only hold between four and seven units of information. Now, this is why cramming does not work. Information in our long-term memory is stored in neural pathways. These pathways are connections between nerve cells in your brain. To effectively learn something and move it from your short-term memory to your long-term memory, you need to repeat a certain activity or learning exercise enough times that the neural pathway is secure. Now, you may know this from experience that sometimes you hear something once and bang, you've learned it. Other times you have to repeat something multiple, multiple times to build that pathway. So repetition is also key here. The best and most effective revision strategies are going to be the ones which most effectively build these neural pathways. OK, it makes them most established and also helps you to build them most efficiently. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Don't spend hours making a beautiful revision timetable. I know it's tempting. I did it myself when I was a student, wasted hours doing this beautiful you know, diagrams, pictures everywhere. Don't do that. Let's make an effective one instead. So first tip is chunk your revision topics. Now this is important because of what I said earlier about your short-term memory. If your short-term memory can only hold between four and seven units of information, then you need to hack this by chunking information into groups. That means that you'll be able to store more in your um, short-term memory and also it will help you to build those pathways to move it to your long-term memory. So as I said, your short-term memory can only hold four to seven bits of information. We can hack this by chunking. If I use English literature as an example, so rather than just saying I'm going to revise literature, I would start by chunking by unit. Now, this is usually easy because your exam board for whatever you're studying will usually do this for you. It will have already divided it down into units. However, then we can chunk further. So say, for example, if I took Of Mice and Men, rather than being like, oh, today I'm going to revise Of Mice and Men, I might chunk that down into characters one day, themes one day, quotes one day, cultural context one day and chunk it into those relevant topics. Now, there are a number of ways you can do that. You can do it in the way I just did it. You could do it instead by dividing it down into five different questions that are answered by that unit. Essentially, you want to break down each unit into manageable chunks. Don't then start with the easy topics. OK, when you're building a revision timetable, again, it can be overwhelming and therefore your brain wants to make your life easy for you. That is a natural survival strategy of your brain to go, OK, let's start with what I already know quite well. No, don't do that. We want to be efficient here. Instead, you first of all need to evaluate how well you know each of these chunks. So, for example, again, taking English as an example, if you've broken down all of your units into the various chunks, sit down and for each one, go red, amber or green like a traffic light. Do I know it really well? Do I know it a bit well or do I not know it at all? And be honest. OK, and evaluate how confident you feel for each of them. So then when you come to revising, start with the hardest first. Start with the ones that you have uh, evaluated as being read, because those are the ones you're going to need to revisit the most amount of times before your exam. Repeat this evaluation process every month, because what you will see is as you revise, when you come back and reflect on it a month later, you will see fewer reds maybe even fewer ambers and more of them will be moving to green. And then you'll always be revising the most kind of high need topic every time. So you're going to be most efficient with your revision. Don't cram. It does not work. Remember, your short term memory can only hold between four and seven units of information. So cramming does not work. Instead, space your learning. Now, this is Ebbinghaus's Forgetting Curve, a really influential model for uh, understanding how we learn metacognition. OK, essentially what it is, is that as soon as you learn something, the process of forgetting immediately starts, as you can see from this diagram. Essentially, the longer time goes, the more you that you forget. However, if you revisit the same information, the pace of forgetting is a lot, but gradually becomes slower with every time you repeat it. 
So, and a really effective way to do this, say for example, one day you did a study session on, we'll say of mice and men. You had an hour revision session at school. If you then came home that evening and just for 10 minutes went over the same notes, literally no more than 10 minutes, you are already going to be hacking your brain to store more information than if you just left it for a week. The ideal amount of time is that you want to leave small amounts of time between going over something and gradually get longer. So day one revision session, leave it half a day, 10 minutes go over, then leave it a day, go over it for another 10 minutes, and then leave it two days, go over it for another 10 minutes. And I'm going to show you techniques you can use to do this effectively. But this is how we learn. So when it comes to revision, doing little but often is way more effective than just doing big, long cramming sessions of six hours at a time. That is not effective for your memory. Click the link in the description to buy this revision uh, workbook, which goes through everything I've gone through in this video, but in more detail, and it will help you to go through, chunk your learning. It has a template for you to uh, identify what you do already know and what you don't know. It also then helps you to build a revision timetable, which will help you do that really quickly because I've done it all the template for you, and it goes through the strategies as well. Link is in the description below. Now let's talk about how to revise. Now, again, I'm guilty of this. When I was a student, I just copied out my notes all the time. I was like, right, I'm just going to copy everything I don't know, and then I'll copy it again, and then I'll copy it again. What a waste of time. Don't just do that. Let me show you what will work so much better. Do use retrieval practice. Okay, so retrieval practice. The process of trying to remember something actually helps you to build neural pathways. So testing yourself is one of the most effective ways to learn something. Because when you are, you know, in that feeling, when you're trying to remember something, your brain is actually forming neural pathways at that moment. So when you're using your revision time, you want to be using retrieval practice strategies because that is actually going to A, show you what you do and don't know, and B, it's actually going to help you learn. So one technique is the Leitner flashcard system. So essentially, go through your revision notes. Anything you don't know, put it on a flashcard. Now keep your flashcards simple. Don't put too much information on them. Literally, question on one side, answer on one side. Now, when you come to revise, test yourself on these flashcards. Any that you get wrong, put to the side. When you finish, you test yourself on all the ones you got wrong. Keep doing that until you've got them all correct within one revision session. Leave it a day, do the exact same thing. Leave it two days, do the exact same thing, like I said with the, with the space learning. This is a very, very effective way because by testing yourself, you are helping yourself to actually learn the information on those cards. Another really effective strategy is memory dump and then concept map. So memory dump is take your topic, let's say um, photosynthesis, and give yourself five minutes and a blank sheet of paper and write down everything you can think of at all to do with photosynthesis. After that five minutes, go back to your revision notes and with a different colour, write down what you missed. OK, you might then turn that information into flashcards because that's the information you now need to make sure that you are learning. A concept map is similar, but with a concept map, you write down everything you can think of, but try to create connections between things. So make links between certain different units of information within the same topic. By doing that, by building connections, again, you are building more effective neural pathways and you are helping yourself to really deeply embed that knowledge and take it from your short-term memory to your long-term memory. Dual coding. This means essentially finding two different ways to embed the same information using both text and image. They're both going to build a neural pathway, one to do with the image, one to do with the text. And by having both, you are making the learning much more stronger and much more likely to stick. OK, so what you could do, you could take a text and you could turn that text into a diagram. Or similarly, if you've got a chart, you could write a description of that chart, OK, on your flashcards. And this is going to help you to embed that information really strongly. It might seem like an obvious one, but because it's sometimes hard, it's very tempting to not do it. Past exam questions. Get a past exam question. Find the mark scheme. So many past papers and mark schemes are available online. Have a go at doing a question in time conditions and then go through the mark scheme and see if you can apply it. This is so valuable. Because by seeing from the mark scheme where you've missed answers or trying to work out how you can apply the mark scheme, because you're questioning yourself and you're testing yourself, you are going to be learning. 
I've got a whole um, booklet which goes through everything I've been through today in more detail, but it gives you the templates for evaluating what you already know. It gives you a revision timetable template that helps you to go back and reflect on what you do and don't know. So click the link in the description if you'd like that. Please like this video, subscribe, and make sure you comment any questions or any videos um, you would like me to make going forward.